to welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us here this morning. Unfortunately, those who are trying to watch online will not be able to. We have any issues right now with the charter as far as keeping it hooked up so we can stream live. So we, unfortunately, we can't do that today. Uh, so, but we are recording it, so if they want to watch it later, they can always, we can always give them a, a disc where they can watch it later. Uh, so that is not part of our control of what we are able to do uh, when it comes to something like that. But we do welcome all who are here with us this morning. We welcome you here on this Labor Day weekend, the third day of September, so the first Sunday in September. So let's all stand as Al comes as he leads us in our call to worship, hymn number 93, it came upon the midnight <laughs> <laughs> Heat. So we're still dealing with the heat, but it's not as hot as it 
was or could be, so that's good. Uh, no school tomorrow for many, many schools, uh, including here as well. But also understand tomorrow that uh, banks and post office, federal things, and many other places will be closed, of course, tomorrow uh, for the uh, Labor Day holiday uh, as well. The 23rd is the actual first day of autumn. Hopefully by then it will bring some cooler weather. You laugh, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good to hope, you know. <laughs> Maybe for the rest of the country. That's right. <laughs> you know, what you trying to say? We don't get autumn? No. No. <laughs> well, we may not get the turning of the leaves, but we Maybe, maybe this year we'll get a little cooler weather. Just a tad. Just a tad. We'll right. brown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, whole, the whole world's out of brown. Well, not the whole Everywhere is brown. Everything. It's brown all over the place. We don't want the brown. <laughs> uh, due to the increase of COVID cases, and, and not so much here, but throughout. I mean, it's not just here in Louisiana. It's throughout the U.S. Uh, a lot of places are dealing with uh, COVID uh, cases that are on the uprise and increase. For just, uh, I guess, a few weeks, we'll, we won't have Sunday school or Wednesday night Bible study um, for, for a while, so just so you will know. Um, when, the internet, when the internet does work and things do go, when things are okay, you can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Uh, again, unfortunate that our internet is not working properly uh, this morning, so we'll have to look into that and see what we can do uh, concerning that, for either, either, even for future references uh, concerning those issues. Um, there are, last week you had the financial report, uh, and if you need one, there is one back, there is one back in the FOIA area, you can take one home if you haven't gotten one. Uh, over on the other table over there, uh, for those who are in the senior adult uh, Sunday school class, there are some, um, some books, uh, Sunday school books that you can take home. Uh, like I said, I'm hope we're hoping that maybe in a, in a week or two we'll get back to doing our, our Bible study from 9 to 10 in the morning on Sunday and then our Wednesday night Bible study as well. Um, and then also I think there's one open window large print back there, devotional. So if you haven't gotten one you'd like to get one, there's one back there as well. So keep these uh, things in mind. Anything else we need to know of what's going on in our city uh, and what's taking place of anything of importance? Uh, there's nothing else. Only also know that um, you need to probably get information maybe from the from the either paper or somewhere else concerning the upcoming election that is coming up. We've got the governor's race, you've got the parish president's race, you've got some council people's race, uh, some other other races that will be taking place October the 14th. I mean, it's just around the corner, so before you know it, it'll be here, so, uh, so just get all the information you can concerning all the people that's running for uh, these particular offices uh, here in same to in this in Louisiana area as well. Mr. Al will come now and he'll lead us. Let us continue as we sing unto the Lord. Hymn number 450, I Need Thee Every Hour. <coughs> Oh, 
prayer of thanks. We have Mr. Al back with us. Yay! Um, <laughs> we have, have him back with us. Also, let me let me say that this is 33 years that he has led the music here at Body Baptist Church as of today. 33 years he has. 33 years since you've been here. Well, yeah, but, you, you, but he has volunteered now for 33 years. But longer than that, because he's done it at, at Victory as well. But I mean, here, for 33 years, he has led the music voluntarily uh, over the years. And I appreciate what you have done. Thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, so 33 years is, is awesome. Um, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a long time as far as a volunteer. And, uh, so. But pray for him as he has some health issues that he's still dealing with and, and will be taking place. So just continue to pray for him as well. Miss Ginger. I'll continue to pray for Dolores, myself, and my husband. Yes. <clears throat> Traveling mercy. Yes. And we'll and Ashley. Yes. Yeah. And Jeff and Jeff 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 We'll do other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving. Miss Renee. Uh, just my different family members and uh, Thanksgiving for answered prayer. Absolutely. Okay. And sure still unspoken. Unspoken. Okay. Sure thing. Yes. Linda. Unspoken. And um, continue to pray for all those in the nursing homes. Sure. Absolutely. Those in nursing homes, hospitals, and other places as well. We sure will. Absolutely. Tinker. My son and daughter-in-law have been kind of sort of battling with the flu. Okay. And God has protected me from it, praise him. <laughs> but um, they need prayer for it. Sure. Healing. Yes. Yeah, but besides the COVID, this is, you know, we're gonna, we, are, we are still getting, you know, and, and people, if they're not dealing with the COVID and not dealing with the flu, they are dealing with allergies and head colds. And it may be just the allergies. It may be just the head cold, but it also may be that as well, unless you test yourself. Uh, and say, okay. Well, they've been to the doctor. They definitely have yes, a touch of the flu. flu. Yes. But I'm just saying, though, you know, people need to understand that this, this COVID that's hitting now is basically a head cold sometimes or maybe feel like maybe it's just an allergy or whatever. So uh, just take precautions. Uh, they're not really telling you to do anything either. So so just, just pray for the different people as they do come up with, with different things. Um, again, traveling mercies for Johnny and Debbie Garrett as they're again traveling back from Kentucky. So do do keep them in prayer as well as others that will be traveling, as was mentioned here as well. Uh, other prayer requests, uh, Clarence. Prayer, thanks, you. I'm glad to be back after having COVID. Yes, yes. And, he, and, and yeah. thanks for the card. I really appreciate that from church. You're welcome. Um, yeah. You know, for somebody that don't get sick, I, I ain't had a cold in 15 years. So. <laughs> and some of them even had those sniffles, you know, it's kind of strange to me. So just glad I'm thankful for God's grace and his mercy. And glad to be back. Amen. I, 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 agree, I agree with you. I, I myself, I don't get sick much either. And, and, and to be honest, I got, I was tested positive um, a week ago Monday. And I had, I had no symptoms whatsoever. And even after testing, I had no symptoms at all. It's like, okay. Uh, so, you know, and sometimes you don't. And, and to me, it just lasted three or four days, and then I tested negative, and that was it. Uh, so, so, yeah. So, and it is. It's strange. Uh, I think when you retire, your immune system. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, it, it's it not does. around people as much. Yeah, but a lot of people right now are dealing with allergies as well as other things as well. So just pray for the different people. Um, as well, for those who are not with us, we have quite we have a few that have decided again just to stay home on the side of, of caution as well. Now, if you want, we do have some masks back there. You can have a mask and take it home with you or whatever. We do have some back there uh, that you can you can have. Uh, uh, take them with you if you feel like you want to do that. And you want to come in here if you want to put a mask on, you can do that as well. Uh, that, that's your prerogative as far as doing all of that. So yes, um, just, again, just pray for the different people on our prayer list and, 
and each other and pray for all that's going on in our area. Any other prayer requests? Frank, I'll be going back in the hospital Thursday. Okay. Uh, a year ago, I had the operation that was supposed to oh. end the problem. Okay. Anyway, it did end the problem. Okay. So I'll be going in Thursday. I don't know what right. I'm really going to do. My understanding was scope. Okay. You know, right. to see if they can't find out <clears throat> what went wrong. Okay. Okay, see what's going on. Great that you find out what it was because, okay. hey, you know, when they operated on me, I was looking for not to have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> you know, right, exactly. And then when it happened, it happened. It happened, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so we'll keep you in prayer as he will be uh, having that on Thursday. I'm sure we'll be <coughs> Yes. Anyone else or anything else? Well, let's see Susie here. Uh, well, Susie called. She just said she had a... Uh, she was involved with the with students who had who had colds. She thought, uh, and she was just taking cautionary measures to make sure that she didn't do anything. So she, if she had anything, she didn't want to give it to you, Ginger. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. She didn't want to give it to anybody. It's so nice to be loved so much. No, no. She didn't want she didn't want to give it to anybody at all. So uh, again, several people have already texted me this week and even today and saying that they're staying home only on side caution. Um, yeah, because Sarah was supposed to be here. And, yeah. Sarah Karen said the same thing. And uh, Tracy. Tra Karen, Tra Karen texted me. She told me the same thing. She okay. said, you're giving it one more week. Sarah, the same thing. She's giving it one more week. So All right. I'm just letting you know. This is People have texted me and said, we're giving it another week. So, so uh, I'll be on a side of caution, which, which is okay. I mean, because we're doing the same thing with our with our Bible study on Sunday morning and on Wednesday night, just on the side of caution. You know, I think I think it'll be okay, but just on the side of caution. We'll see what takes place uh, uh, in the coming weeks. So yes. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am, Janet. Prayers of Thanksgiving. Sure. Always prayers of Thanksgiving, and as always, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ. Pray for the many people who are not saved. I'm sure you know some. I know some. Uh, and pray for the area churches as well and all who uh, are basically proclaiming the gospel. And I'm not just talking about ministers. I'm talking about people in general, the believers, the Christians, who are spreading the gospel and, and who are out there as well. Again, just pray for each other during the course of the week and all that goes on. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, as we come at this time again, and we lift up in prayer all the prayer requests, all the concerns, the many things that have been voiced that you have heard each and every request. And Lord, we pray not only, we not only lift that up before you, but we pray for the many unspoken, the many things that have gone up to you in private by individuals, as you know what is on the hearts, and the minds of each individual. And so we lift up all these prayers, spoken and unspoken alike, and we pray for your will to be done in everything. And we pray, Lord, that you'll help and be with those who are dealing with different health issues and health problems regardless of what it may be, whether it's a COVID, whether it's a flu, whether it's sinus problems, whether it's a head cold. We lift up each and every one up who are dealing with that. We pray for those that are dealing with other physical problems and other physical ailments as well. We lift them up and we pray for them. Traveling mercies for those who will be traveling and are traveling. Watch over them, help them, be with them, Lord, and just we just pray for a safe time that they are having as well. We pray for those who are not with us this morning, some on a side of caution, some who are out sick, and we lift them all up before you as well. We pray for uh, the many places that are devastated either by the hurricane or by fires or by other things with, with different states and different cities and different places. We lift up these, these places, but we lift up the people who are going through these terrible tragedies that have happened to them, and we lift them up and we pray for them. We pray for our leaders, Lord. We pray for those who are in places of power and authority 
and we ask for your help in, in, their, in, in their lives as well. We pray for the upcoming election that will be taking place in October here in Louisiana. Be with us. Give us a mind to think with. Help us to understand what it is that we, who we should vote for and what should take place as well. Again, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, and many things. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for your many blessings. Thanks for seeing to our needs, for being with us, and for helping us. And Lord, we pray. And we ask for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we pray for their soul. We pray, Lord, that they will come to know you as Lord and Savior before it's too late. And we pray you'll help them and be with them as well. Be with us now. Give us voices again to sing and open our hearts and our ears to your word. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand in as Al comes now and leads us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 426, Victory in Jesus.
appoint you as last as we have, and we ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all is collected, that it's used as the pertinence of your kingdom. For the spreading of the gospel, and Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. chapter 3 and in verses 7 through 13 looking at the church in Philadelphia. Now everyone knows that Philadelphia means brotherly love. And it's, I don't know if it came from this particular city or not, but that's where we associate brotherly love is with Philadelphia. It, here it was a city where brotherly love because of its love and its kindness to, from the citizens to all who were there and to each other as well. Now this church, like all the churches, it had its imperfections, yet in this church, like the other church, like one of the other churches, Jesus commends them for their, for their faithfulness and their loyalty. This was one of the churches like Smyrna, that did not receive a rebuke from the Lord. Uh, now little is known concerning that of the Church of Philadelphia uh, when this letter here was written. Um, we do we think that the church itself was a, a church that was small in number, but was very faithful to the Word of God and the work of the Lord as well. Um, it, it lasted for centuries. Um, it lasted in, uh, for centuries, and unfortunately, oh, it was overrun by the, Mo the Muslims and taken over by them, finally succumbing in the mid-14th century, somewhere up in that area there. But today, let us look and let us read about what Jesus says concerning this church, and we read about the power, the promise, and the perseverers as well, as is written here in chapter 3 and in verses 7 through 13. So notice, first of all, in verses 7 and 8, notice the power of Jesus, the Holy One, as he writes to this church. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Now this is an awesome thing that we see here. This is coming from Jesus, who is the power and the might, the Holy One. And, and again, Jesus is the Holy One and the genuine, who has the genuine power and authority, if you know this, that is equal to no one. Absolutely no one. I, notice he says in here, I, when I open something, no one is able to shut it. And when I shut the door, no one is able to open it. Now that is talking of awesome power. When it says no one 
And he means no one is able to do it. In other words, he has the power that is equal to no one. He is the power and the authority. He has the key of David and opens and shuts any door. Again, we're talking about the authority and the power of Jesus and the opportunity. Notice, when he opens the door, what's he doing? He's giving the church, he's giving the people the opportunity to walk through the door in order to do service for him. And there are many times where Jesus has opened doors. There have been many times where people have done. And then there are times where he shuts the door. Do you remember when Paul wanted to go up into Asia and preach? And what did God say? No, Paul, I don't want you to do that. That's not for you. He shut that door because he had someone else that was going to go up into Asia and proclaim the gospel. He wanted Paul to do something else. And this is what he does. He opens doors and he shuts the doors. He does these things because he wants particular people to do his work. That's like the Ethiopian. Do you think that Philip, when he went to the Ethiopian, do you think it was just a coincidence? Absolutely not. You see what happened there? God presented the gospel to him through Philip. And Philip went one way, and the Ethiopian went to his country. And as he went to his country, you know what he did? He proclaimed the gospel. See, God opened that door. But it wasn't for Philip or someone else. It was for the Ethiopian. Sometimes God opens the door for us to where we have that opportunity to present the gospel to someone else who needs to hear the gospel for the saving of their soul. See, that God doesn't do anything just out of, out, of, out of chance. Everything he does, he says, my word will go out and it will not return to me void. He always has a reason and a purpose behind everything he does. Everything. He doesn't do anything just willy-nilly. Sometimes we do things just because, and we don't even know why we do it half the time. But God, when he opens that door, and he's opening that door for us, you've heard me say it. My wife does it as well. I don't like the phrase on the sound of music. And what the, what the nun told him. God closes the door, he opens a window. I don't like that. When God opens up one door and he closes another, he's going to open up another door. When he closes one, he's going to give you a door that you can go through. I told him, I said, I don't think God wants us to climb through a window. He said, if he shuts one door, it's because he doesn't want us to go through that. So don't try to force your way and go someplace else. Instead, wait be patient upon the Lord and allow him to open the door where he wants you to go. There's a reason why. And maybe it's not that time yet for you to go through that door. Even though you think, man, this would be so good for me to do. And he says, hey, you're not to do this. You know, so understand this. You know, here we see these things represent in the Philadelphia churches Again, it's the authority, the opportunity that Jesus gives to these faithful people, the faithful Christians in the Philadelphia church. You know, he opens up these doors. He has these opportunities. And, and we do it, and we do it, and when, he, and when he does, and when he asks us to do these things, we do it because he gives us the ability and the power in which to do it as well. Remember what Jesus told his disciples John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. Here he says, No branch, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must, must remain in the vine. Jesus is the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. You see, that's what we also have to remember. 
as we're doing these things. It is God who gives us the ability, the power in which to do. You see, it's not how big a church is or, or what the makeup of a church is, whether it's made up of a lot of people or just a few. The Philadelphia church was made up with just a few people. They remained faithful. They did things. See, it's not how big a church is. It, it's a fact that but when being, being faithful, when the Lord does open that door for us to go and do what he wants us to do, concerning what he, what he would have for us to do. He's always opening doors. You know, in Colossians chapter 4, and in verse 2 and 3, here again, the Apostle Paul writes, he says, Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too. Why? Watch well, what he said. And pray for us that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mysteries of Christ, for which I am in chains. You see, he's telling the people there, pray that God may open that door, even though he himself is in chains. He himself. He is not, and so, this church, the Philadelphia church, like Paul, knew that if the Lord opened the door to proclaim the gospel, that would give them the opportunity to do it. And even this little church here, Bayou Baptist Church, we too, small in number, but yet we can go out and proclaim the gospel as God opens up the door to people who need to hear the gospel to people whom God will send you. He just doesn't send ministers or people called into the ministry, music, or ministers of music or education or, or such, but he calls all believers to go out and proclaim the message. And from time to time in your life, you're going to find out God's going to open that door. And he said, that's what I want you to do. Tell them the gospel. And tell them. And it's not, maybe not so much in word, but in action. You've heard, you, you've heard the old saying, you've heard me say it. Action speaks louder than words. People will truly know if you are, not so much because you say I am, but what, what you do, what you say, how you act, and what takes place. Then they'll say, wow, okay. That person truly is a believer. So we see here concerning the power and the authority of the one who opens, who shuts, who is there. But notice also in verses 9 and 10 of this, of this chapter from the Church of Philadelphia, notice the promises of Jesus the Holy One, not only to this church, but to faithful believers. Notice the promise that he that he so gives to the church, which is also for other churches as well. I will make those who are the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that you have knowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those living on the earth. Wow. Now that is, that is a mouthful there that he's really telling the people. That is, a, that is a sentence here. This church, I believe, was in a similar situation to that of Paul when he went out and proclaimed the gospel as well. You know, in, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and in verse 9, here, he, here, here it's recorded for us. He says, because of a great door for effective work has opened to me. You see that word door again. See, another door has been opened to me. And there are many who oppose me. As Paul went out, and again, as he went through one door, he goes through another door. And then he goes through another door. However, both Paul and this church, they had both opportunities and they had obstacles. 
in which they had to deal with, in which they took about it. Understand this, and hear me, hear me clearly. Unbelief sees obstacles, but faith sees opportunities. Many times we allow obstacles to hinder our faith or hinder what the Lord would have us to do or even go through that door. It's clearly that's what he would have for us to do. You remember the people in the promised land? The first set of people that went through the promised land. What, what, what happened? When the, ten, when the 12 men went and they investigated the land, what took place? What did, the ten, what did 10 of the 12 people say to Moses and the rest of the people concerning the promised land? That's right. That's right. They couldn't do it. They said it was impossible. Now, the two people said that it's not impossible. We can do this. Who are those two people? Joshua. Uh, Joshua and Caleb. Caleb, that's right. Joshua and Caleb. They came back and he said, no, wait a minute, you don't understand. You're looking at this all wrong. Don't look at the obstacle. Look at the fact that we have faith in the one who has the power and the authority to do wonderful and mighty things. He's leading us to do this. You see, that's where we come in at. Many times we look at the obstacle rather than looking at the opportunity that the Lord has presented for us. And we're not walking by faith, we're walking by sight. Many times that happens. David and Goliath. Again, we have an example. Walking by faith or walking by sight. Now, why is it that King Saul and all of the men could, would not go up against Goliath? Because it was so big. Huh? It was so big. That's right. It was big. And so they, were, they, they saw an obstacle. Where David, this teenager, comes and he says, I can't, I, I, I'm only, I'm only, I'm paraphrasing here. He looks around and he sees all of these mighty men shivering in their boots and he says, what's going on here? Why, why is it nobody goes out there and just take care of this guy? Oh, well, we can't do this. You see how big this guy is? What? You letting this thing stop you? Wait a minute. I'll take care of this. And he took care of it. What did he do? See, David, he, what did he do? He, by faith, saw an opportunity to show the power and the might of Jehovah God to not only the Philistines, but to the rest of the Israelites as well. Where the other ones, all they saw was an obstacle. So we see this. The woman who is bleeding for 12 years, she too, she did not allow the crowds of people to hinder her from touching Jesus and be healed. She overcame the obstacles. See, we need to overcome obstacles and do not allow the obstacles to, to hinder our walk, our faith with, with the Lord. And since he holds the keys, who's in control here? Jesus. And all we have to do is to follow what he would want us to do. All we have to do is obey his command and walk by faith. Be obedient to his word. He will take care of the enemies. Notice he says this here. He says, I will make those who are the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews who are not, and I will make them out there, they are liars, and I will make them come, and they will fall at your feet. That's an awesome thing. We see it. All those people that caused the obstacles, all the enemies, he was going to take care of concerning this. Jesus, and how many times did Jesus demonstrate, and not how many times, because there's been so many times, but when Jesus went against the demons, went against Satan, how many times did these demons, did these Satan, ever defeat and overcome Jesus. Never. That's right. Not once. Not once. But we, we allow the defeat to come into our lives because we, walk, we look by, we, we see the obstacle and we're not walking by faith. And that's what we need to do as well. 
And not only that, but Jesus, notice he also promised something else. Not only will he defeat the enemy, notice he says, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world. Now, what is that? That is a time of tribulation. That is the seven-year tribulation that will take place. Now, I believe, this is me now, I believe according to God's word, I believe that every faithful, truly born-again believer will not go through the tribulation. That I believe that we will, that we, that before the tribulation takes place, we will be raptured up. We'll be taken up. And one of the places I go to, and there are other places as well, is in 1 Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and part of chapter 5, it reveals this very thing as well. And I'll just read from you uh, from chapter 5, verses 6 through 9. And here it also says concerning this, it says, So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-control. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, they get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, that is through Jesus Christ, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith. You see, that's the key to our, our overcoming obstacles and also our victory, is having faith and looking to the one who gave us that faith. Putting on faith and love as a breastplate <coughs> and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath. Now, when he's talking about suffering wrath, he's talking about the tribulation. But to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that's why Christ came to die on the cross. He came to give us salvation. He came so that we can be free. He came so that we can know what it truly means to be victorious over sin, death, Satan, and the rest as well. Again, we read here concerning the most wonderful promise of Jesus. And we as his church and his people, all we have to do is make the most of every opportunity that he sends before us. Make the most of it. And we need to stop allowing obstacles to hinder those opportunities. You know, when we don't do the opportunities or do what Christ, the Lord would have us to do, you know what happens? We miss out on receiving the joy and the blessings from the Lord. We miss out on the joy and the blessing of seeing someone else come to know Jesus Christ. We miss out on the joy and the blessing of seeing how God will transform one life who needs Jesus Christ. And, it, and we miss out on that. And so God says, okay, I'll let somebody else do it. You don't want to do it? I'll let somebody else do it. And that somebody else will receive the joy and the blessing. Not that that person who, who is given that deserves any credit or anything because God uses all of us to reveal salvation to other people. And he gets the glory. He gets the honor. It just shows the power and the might of God. And it's wonderful when God can use us to Show someone else that they need Christ in their hearts and in their lives. And then the last thing we see here in the writing to the church in Philadelphia is the perseverance. The perseverance. Notice in verses 11 through 13 as he says, I am coming soon. Now, we know soon to them is, is, could be years, could be months, it could be days, it could be hours. We just have to be ready. And he says, hold on to what you have so that no one can take your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God at the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven, from my God, and I will also write on him a new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now this is an awesome thing. Look at what will take place in the life of a truly born-again believer, those who persevere, those who overcome. 
Those who remain faithful. Notice he says, you're going to be a pillar. Now what does that mean? That doesn't mean you're going to be some kind of a statue. If you ever look at the ruins on TV, they show you the ruins of cities, all the places. What is left standing? The pillars. The, pillars. the columns. A building, let's say, gets destroyed. What is left? The columns there. In other words, what he's, what he's saying here, it means that you will be a permanent place in the temple of God, in heaven itself. You will be there permanently, forever. And also, this also means that you will be strong and stable. That nothing will be able to move you from where you are. You will be there forever and ever and ever. Never to be moved. You will be the strong pillar. Because it will be founded upon what Jesus Christ has done. And not only that, they will have the name of God written on them. Such an awesome thing that we see. Because this means that they belong to Jehovah God. Just like the Jews, Abraham and all the rest, they belong to God. But well, through Jesus Christ, when you come to know him as Lord and Savior, when you repent of your sin, you then belong to God. And Jesus even said that, those who belong to me, my Father will give to me. See, we belong to him. And not just for a day, not just for an hour, not just for a few years, but we belong to him forever and ever and ever. When we cease to live upon this earth, when we breathe our last, we will be in the place of God forever. Forever. Never to be separated from God. Never to be separated from Jesus. Never to be separated from that place. That new Jerusalem he talks about in Revelation 21. It says there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And it will come down from heaven, a new Jerusalem. That's where we'll be. It will be a place without sin, without death, without Satan, without evil. It will be an awesome place in which there we will see firsthand our Lord and our Savior, and be with Him forever and ever. Never to be separated. An eternal citizenship. Eternally. In that capital city of the New Jerusalem. We have a new name. You may say, well, what's that going to be all about? A new name. I, I feel as though that, what he's talking about, it's just like when he called Peter. Remember, he called Peter, and he says, you'll no longer be called Cephas, but you'll be called Peter. You see, he gave him a new name. You'd be called Cephas. And then he did the same thing with Paul. When, when Paul was known as Saul, then he became Paul, and many others as well. In other words, he's going to give you a name that fits your character. That's only known by him. And it'll be, and, it, and, you, and you'll understand it when he tells it to you as well. Such an awesome thing. It fits you. And, and, and by the Lord himself. And all of this, all of this, this whole thing here that we have read here in the church of Philadelphia, what do we see here? We see the power. We see the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ that he will give and so reveal to those who are overcomers, those who persevere. How do you persevere? You persevere by the power of Jesus Christ, by knowing him as Lord and as Savior. Just as he so said in Ephesians chapter 6, put on the full armor of God. Put on all of it, every bit of it, so that you will be able to stand against the attacks of Satan and the workers of Satan as well. But again, it begins with a relationship. The people here in Philadelphia, they were a small group. But notice the Lord said what? They were faithful. They persevered. They continue on. And as he says, hold on to what you have. Hold on to it. What you have is something to hold on to. Don't let go of it. Don't allow someone else to even take it from you or persuade you that what you're doing is not the right thing. Hold on to Jesus Christ and what he has done. Don't allow the world, friends, relatives, or whomever to take away from you what you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep it. Keep it. 
Keep it not only in your hand, but keep it close to your heart. Keep it right here, for where your heart is, that will tell everything. But it begins again with the relationship with Jesus Christ. The question is, is do you know Christ as Lord and as Savior, as your Lord, as your Savior? And do you know him today? If not, come to know him this morning. Let us stand. Almighty God, if there is anyone here this morning whom you have talked to, whom you have spoken to, you've opened that door, Lord, in their hearts. You've opened that door in their minds. You've opened that door for them to walk through. And you're telling them, come, come unto me. And I pray, Lord, today that if they will heed your voice, as it says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. If they have heard it, Lord, I pray that by your power, it will come unto you now. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if God has spoken to you today, you come as we sing the nail scarred hand, hymn number 318. Still, we can be like this church in Philadelphia as well. We're small, but the Lord has opportunities for each and every one of us. You, you, you're going to face obstacles. It's not no ands or ifs, but 
but it's just a matter of when. You will face obstacles in your life. You already, some of you already face many obstacles, but there are many opportunities as well. And all we have to do is walk by faith and remain faithful to him who can open the door and shut the door as well. Be faithful to the Lord and what he would have for you to do while you journey in his life. There is work that the Lord has for each and every one of us that he would have for us to do. And all we have to do is walk through that door and allow the Lord to work. So pray for each other. Pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ, whomever they may be, a friend, a co-worker, or whomever. Pray for the many people in need of Jesus Christ. And as always, pray and thank the Lord for all he's done for you in your life. And ask him, Lord, what is it that you would have for me to do while I journey in this life? Pray for, each, pray for each other. Pray for those who are sick, who are dealing with physical problems, physical ailments, COVID, whatever it may be. Pray for them and remember the many people who are going through different things in their lives as we speak now as well. I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. We welcome. We invite you to come back next Sunday at 10.30 for our worship time as we have worship from 10.30 until. I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. Al, lead us in a closing prayer, please. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you. Thank you for all the blessings you bestowed upon us. We know, Father, there are going to be trials and tribulations. But, Father, we know you're there to walk us through them, to take care of them. I pray, Lord, that you be with us as we leave and go our separate ways. Bring us back to worship again together. In our son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.